Self-improvement ruined my life. Let me explain how. When you work on improving yourself, you keep striving to be better, smarter, stronger. The ultimate goal of self-improvement is to be the best version of yourself. To reach a point where you don't have to keep improving because, well, you're the best version you can be. That is what self-improvement is about. Think of that for a second. With self-improvement, you need to reach a point where you no longer need to improve. This means that in order to become the best version of yourself, you need to actually stop trying to improve. This video explores the paradox of self-improvement and how it actually ruined my life. There is this popular belief around self-improvement being a never-ending journey, like a hobby that you can never complete. You're always searching for ways to become the best version of yourself, to achieve more, and to find greater happiness and fulfillment in your life. In the pursuit of this goal, you actually end up reading and watching videos about how to improve. At first, it's really exciting and motivating to dive into this world, reading books like Atomic Habits or The 4-Hour Workweek. It may actually feel like a revelation, the same way a treasure map that leads you to a chest filled with exciting and valuable coins, opening up new possibilities and spiking your thoughts in ways you could never imagine. However, as time goes on, you find that the initial burst of motivation fades and you actually struggle to make lasting changes in your life. You read more books, watch more videos and attend different seminars, always hoping to find that one piece of advice that will unlock the key to success. It's as if the pursuit of self-improvement is more about consuming and creating an utopia of who you could be, rather than actually doing the hard work to be. At times, it can feel like a never-ending journey, like a hamster wheel that you can't seem to get off. You may find yourself constantly striving for more unattainable ideals, always feeling like you're falling short, no matter how high you try. The truth is that self-improvement is not just about consuming information. It's about taking action and making real changes in your life. It's about doing the hard work to build new habits, to develop new skills, and cultivate new mindsets. And this is where the real challenge lies. When you set to improve, you often come face to face with your own limitations, fears, and insecurities. You may discover that you're not as disciplined or motivated, or that our goals and aspirations are not as clear as you thought they were. This can be difficult to confront, and it may lead you to feel discouraged or even give up. Self-improvement is not a linear process. There will be setbacks and also obstacles along the way, but these can also be opportunities for growth and learning. The pursuit of self-improvement requires patience, perseverance, and a willingness to be vulnerable and honest with yourself. In the end, the real goal of self-improvement is not just to achieve some external measure of success or happiness, but to cultivate a deeper sense of self-awareness self-compassion and self-acceptance. When we can accept ourselves as we are, flaws and all, and work to improve ourselves from a place of love and kindness, we can truly transform our lives in meaningful and lasting ways. And that's when the journey should end. But it doesn't. There are two common paths of approaching self-improvement. You can be a junkie and you can be a tourist. The self-improvement junkie is someone who is constantly seeking out new sources of information and techniques to improve. They may attend seminars, read books, listen to podcasts, and hire coaches to help them overcome challenges or achieve their goals. For them, the journey is not about the improvement itself, but rather about the motivation and the fear of missing out on something that could help them achieve their next big breakthrough. The self-improvement tourist, on the other hand, is someone who turns to self-help only when facing a crisis or challenge. They may not actively seek out self-improvement information or techniques, but rather use it as a tool to address specific issues in their lives. For the tourist, self-help is like going to the doctor. They only do it when they need to, not really when they want. While both paths can lead to personal growth and development, there are advantages and disadvantages to each. The self-improvement junkie may be more focused on the pursuit of self-improvement itself rather than actual improvement. 
This can lead to a never-ending cycle of seeking and consuming information without applying it to their lives. In contrast, the self-improvement tourist may be more likely to apply the information they learn, as they are using it to address specific challenges in their life. It is important to find a balance between seeking out new information and techniques and actually applying them to your life. The key is to focus on progress rather than perfection and to be open to trying new things and learning from both successes and failures. And there is something funny about this approach to life. It's like self-improvement is the answer to all of our struggles. The idea that we can better ourselves and solve all our problems is tempting. Who doesn't want to be the best version of themselves? But sometimes the pursuit of self-improvement can lead to a never-ending cycle of disappointment and dissatisfaction as well. When you look for something that needs to be improved, you will always find. Anything that tells you how to improve your life is implying that there is something inherently wrong with you that needs fixing. We may actually start feeling like we're not good enough as we are. And even if we do manage to achieve the level of self-improvement we're seeking, we may find that it's not enough. There's always something else to work on, something else to fix. It's like we are on a never-ending quest for perfection that we can never truly achieve. The constant quest for self-improvement can sometimes become a way of avoiding our deepest problems. Instead of dealing with the root cause of the issues, we may try to fix them by acquiring new skills or adopting new habits. And this can lead to a surface level approach to our problems rather than a more holistic one. Nobody's perfect and that's okay. Embracing our imperfections can be a powerful way to build self-acceptance and self-love rather than trying to be someone else or attain some impossible standards of perfection, we can learn to love and appreciate ourselves just the way we are. You can eventually improve yourself to the point where nothing or no one can offend you. Everyone loves you. You look amazing. You will have so much money that you can do whatever you want. But at a certain point, it sounds more like insecurities rather than self-improvement and confidence. And self-improvement never stops. Because if you look for something to improve, you will always find something to improve. Ultimately, the journey of self-improvement should be one of joy and fulfillment, not an endless quest for an unattainable ideal. It's fine to enjoy reading self-improvement material, as long as you also understand your relationship with it. As long as you make yourself control it. Stand there. Hey, hey! What did I just say? And ensure that it doesn't control you. In his book, Start With Why, Simon Sinek discusses the concept of the golden circle, which outlines how great leaders and organizations start by asking why. What motivates you? What do you believe in? Once you have a clear sense of your why, you can then move on to how, the specific actions you'll take to realize your why. Finally, you can focus on the what, the result of your actions. But what happens when you pursue self-improvement without a clear why? You may find yourself lost and lacking motivation despite your best efforts. This journey is one that you can start over and over again. But simply feeling like you've made progress doesn't necessarily mean that you actually have. It's important to remember your why and your motivation and your purpose as well. Ultimately, the goal of self-improvement is to reach that place where you don't no longer where you no longer need it. You can enjoy life and make life changes along the way without constantly feeling like there's something to fix and or improve. And when you reach that point, you can turn your attention outside and start helping others rather than solely focusing on yourself. By doing so, you can create a positive impact in the world around you and continue to grow and evolve as a person. The pursuit of self-improvement can sometimes be self-defeating as it can lead to a never-ending cycle of consuming information without taking any real action. The real goal of self-improvement is not just to achieve external success, but to cultivate a deeper sense of self-awareness, self-compassion and self-acceptance, to find a balance between seeking out new information and applying it to our lives. Before even starting, have a clear reason for why you're embarking this journey. What motivates you and what do you believe in? So take some time to reflect on what truly matters to you and ask yourself, what is your why? <laughs>